connect with someone in Hungary uh, market. So thank well, you so thank much. Marcella. Thank you all for being here. Cassidy's in the room with me telling me we're two minutes past due, so we have to get started. So um, <laughs> we're, is everybody admitted, Cassidy? Can I start? Well, good morning, every. I'm sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you joining us this afternoon for the third in the Global Spotlight series that the Global, Real, the Global Business Council of our local realtor association has been putting together. My name is Patricia Tan. I have the pleasure of serving as your vice chair for the Global Business Council this year. Uh, the Spotlight on Hungary is the third in our series. We have another three scheduled for third and fourth quarter 2021. Uh, we started with Spain, then we went to Colombia, and this week we're glad to be back in Europe again, so Eastern Europe. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'd like to thank our presenters for being here with us today. Uh, they're coming from all different parts of the country. We have um, people from New York, Chicago, um, where else? Right here in Sarasota from Miami. So really a good global. And of course, our guest of honor just uh, arrived from Budapest in Hungary. So very nice to have everyone with us today. We're going to start off the, today. Um, I have, if I can share my slides here, I have just a little introduction for us. Um, these are the speakers that we have joining us today. Very happy to have Judith here from New York. Uh, I'm gonna introduce each speaker before this, just before they speak, so their bios will be fresh in your mind. And each speaker is going to share their own slide presentation and cover different aspects of Hungary, our relationship with the US, things that we need to know as real estate practitioners and business people to help us be successful when we're working with Hungarians here or building relationships back with Hungarians in their home country. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, Judith Tarko is the economic attache for Hungary in New York, where she has worked since 2015. And as an economic attache, she engages in developing business relationships between Hungary and the United States. Her focus is on realizing her government's priorities by obtaining more foreign direct investment into Hungary and facilitating export of small and medium-sized companies. She's, since taking her office, Judith has been working closely with USA business communities, companies and government stakeholders, and she has a strong investment promotion background. Prior to being posted to the USA, Judith was working for the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency and was responsible for investment projects coming from a wide range of foreign countries. Since 2005, she has worked closely with many multinational companies managing their investment projects, and this has resulted in thousands of newly created jobs in Hungary. Judith has been the Vice President of the American Hungarian Chamber of Commerce of New York for five years now. She just told me before we started that she has a new posting. She'll be starting work soon in London. So I'm very jealous as that's my home <laughs> country. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Miss Judith Toko. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, for your kind and detailed introduction. Um, I would like to thank the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manati for their warm invitation. And I would like to especially welcome and um, thank the members of the Hungarian community in Florida who could join us today. Also, on behalf of His Excellency Ambassador Sabocs Takács, I would like to thank you for your understanding for Ambassador Takács being unable to join this event uh, uh, due to another commitment today. Ambassador Takács delegated me to introduce you Hungary, and um, I promise that I'm going to do my best to tell you what Hungary has to offer. So, for today, uh, I prepared an agenda, a short agenda uh, consisting of three T 
teams. First, um, I would like to give a short uh, overview of the relationship between the United States and Hungary in general. Then I would love to speak a little bit about the business relations between the two countries. And finally, I would like to share with you a couple of slides about the Hungarian business climate. So if uh, you're okay with this agenda, um, I'm happy to start with uh, introducing that the relationship between the two countries. So our Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, Peter Sierto said recently that the United States is the most important ally and uh, strategic partner of Hungary outside of the European Union. I think uh, that Hungarian and US relations uh, have progressed and reached new heights in the recent years. Uh, it uh, helps strengthen the transatlantic, transatlantic uh, relationship, which is vital in terms of the security of Europe. We uh, diplomats serving um, uh, outside of Hungary um, in the United States uh, on the representations of Hungary, we work towards promoting political, security, uh, economic, and also cultural uh, cooperation between the two uh, countries. Um, speaking about the Hungarian representations, there are uh, many here in the United States. Of course, we have our uh, embassy in uh, DC. Uh, we have consulate uh, in Chicago, New York City, and uh, Los Angeles. And we have vice consulates uh, in uh, San Francisco, Austin, and Miami. In each and every representation, there is at least one economic attaché uh, like me uh, serving and doing its best to, to boost um, economic cooperations between the two countries. 2021 is a very special year for us uh, hung uh, Hungarians because uh, this is the year uh, when Hungary and the United States will ce celebrate the 100th anniversary of, of establishment of diplomatic relations. This is a grandiose occasion and uh, accordingly we are planning uh, many celebrations in the second half uh, of uh, this year. Uh, we are, the two countries are also uh, allies uh, in NATO. We have Hungarian troops serving in the NATO uh, and we have made significant efforts to boost uh, uh, our def defense spending over the past years uh, to reach the 2% target uh, by hopefully 2024, the latest. As for Florida, um, the state is utmost important in terms of uh, the Hungarian, uh, Hungarian perspectives, since there are more than 100,000 Hungarians living in Florida. This is, uh, this is uh, a very uh, active and also a very cohesive community. Uh, many Hungarian companies choose Florida as an entry point uh, of them to the United States market. So we are very pleased that uh, the Hungarian Chamber of Business and Commerce in Florida was uh, established recently. And also there is going to be a huge Hungarian event uh, later this year at the end of September uh, called the Hungarian Summit uh, in, uh, in Daytona. Uh, but I think uh, that uh, Zsuzsanna Csajkás, who's coming, uh, who's a speaker after me, me, is going to elaborate on this topic also. In Florida, we have uh, uh, one vice consulate in uh, Miami, and uh, we have two so-called honorary consuls who uh, represent uh, Hungarians and Hungarian interests uh, in the state. 
we also have some probably uh, for you guys well-known names who have Hungarian origins, like uh, the football player uh, Larry Tronka, who is Hungarian. Uh, also, the wealthiest man of uh, wealthiest Hungarian man lives uh, in uh, Florida. His name is uh, uh, Thomas Peterfi. Uh, and uh, also our former U.S. ambassador uh, to Budapest uh, uh, has uh, settled down in Florida, Mr. Kornstein, uh, after returning from his uh, Budapest uh, 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 duty uh, recently. So not only uh, in terms of people, but also in terms of companies. Uh, Florida is, uh, is an important partner of ours. We have um, uh, many US companies who operate, which operate in Hungary and have their headquarters in Florida, like uh, JBL, Office Depot, uh, Sykes, Burger King. So our eyes are on Florida all the time. We, are, we keep our eyes on Florida. Uh, as for the relationship between uh, the two countries in terms of business, Hungary and the United States have a historically great uh, trade and business relation. Actually, U.S. is the number one export destination of Hungary outside of the European Union, and U.S. is the uh, number two foreign direct investor uh, in Hungary uh, right after uh, Germany. Um, for years now. There are, uh, it's always a surprising data when I uh, tell um, US business people, but it's true that there are 1700 US companies uh, operating in Hungary and uh, they employ more than 100,000 people, which is uh, pretty significant if you take into consideration that a country is. Um, uh, has a population of a little bit less than 10 million. So, so US, is, um, US companies are, are truly uh, important for us. Um, out, of, uh, out of the 50 largest US companies, uh, 40 uh, have some kind of presence in Hungary. Uh, companies like IBM, General Electric, ExxonMobil, Coca-Cola, Morgan Stanley, Citibank, and so on. They all uh, are uh, well-known uh, customers, so to say. Uh, investors uh, consider Hungary uh, as a country with a pro-business uh, government, uh, and uh, it is very lucrative uh, in US perspectives, since we are a full member of the European Union. So, actually the, the whole European single market can be reached uh, via uh, Hungary and via the Hungarian uh, market. Obviously our goals uh, here as uh, economic attaches is uh, to further increase the ex export figures of Hungary and uh, 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 naturally to further increase foreign direct uh, investment to the country. And uh, this is the point where I would like to jump on to my presentation. So now I'm going to try to share my screen. Uh, I hope I can do this. Uh. All right, can you see my PowerPoint, please? Yes, we can, thank you. All right, thank you. So just a couple of slides about um, the Hungarian business climate. These are slides from HIPAA. Uh, you can see its logo on the top right-hand uh, corner. This is the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency that uh, we that I and uh, we economic attaches work very closely with. So uh, Hungary is, uh, uh, is located in the heart of Europe in the Carpathian Basin, surrounded by uh, the Carpe Carpathian Hills. Um, 
it has a huge uh, fresh water reservoir uh, under the ground and we have the largest uh, freshwater uh, lake, what we are very proud of, Lake Balaton on the western side of the country. This is a beautiful place, by the way, to um, relax uh, uh, during the summer for tourists as well. So the country has a population is of uh, 9.7 million. Uh, our capital city is the beautiful Budapest with 1.75 uh, million inhabitants. We have a parliamentary uh, republic, a conservative uh, with a conservative government. Uh, uh, three, uh, they won three elections in a row. And uh, we have, as I mentioned, the full EU membership since 2004. We are also a member of the UN, OECD, WTO, NATO, IMF. Uh, so very international. Um, we are not uh, members of the um, e uh, Eurozone yet, though so our currency is uh, still the Hungarian foreign. Another slide about uh, the logistics and, uh, uh, and the, um, the location of the country. So um, Hungary has the longest motorway network uh, within the Central European uh, region. And as you can see, um, any um, European uh, city can be reached uh, within uh, two and a half, three hours flight from uh, Budapest. 190 industrial parks are looking forward to welcoming uh, investors and companies. Uh, and we have a total modern industrial stock uh, over 2 million uh, square meter. 5G co coverage is available in Budapest and we expect a full uh, countryside coverage by 2023. The country has a resilient economy despite of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, Hungary had the fastest was the fastest growing uh, country within one of the fastest growing countries within the European Union. Of course, the pandemic uh, uh, had its uh, negative effects. Uh, however, the economy uh, the uh, the government came up with um, so-called economic protection action plan and. Uh, with uh, the help of this plan and um, project, uh, we managed to say, save uh, uh, or protect uh, 280,000 jobs. And uh, also this uh, uh, plan generated um, a lot of uh, investments, um, uh, brownfield investments within uh, the country. Um, one more thing that I wanted to mention on this slide is the VAT, uh, which is 27%, ranges from 0 to 27%. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact that the government decided to, uh, to create a so-called consumption-based um, taxation system. So those pay more taxes who consume more. However, uh, we have uh, the largest, the uh, lowest uh, uh, corporate income tax uh, rate, which is flat and which is one digit 9% in Hungary. So whoever does uh, business in Hungary, um, they pay uh, flat 9% corporate income tax. This is very lucrative, um, to tell you the truth, for the investors and also very competitive within the European Union and even within the CEU region. Also, our uh, personal income tax rate is flat tax. It's 15%. And um, the tax burden on labor uh, is um, also uh, gradually decreased. It, it is 15.5% uh, presently. Uh, a foreign trade focus uh, is uh, an utmost important within the diplomacy and within the foreign affairs uh, of uh, Hungary uh, under the supervi supervision of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Uh, there is an 
Exim Bank, Export Import Bank, a Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency, and the Hungarian Export Promotion a Agency cooperating uh, very closely with each other and also cooperating very closely with us, economic attaches all over the world to increase foreign direct investment and export uh, uh, of Hungary. Um, this is something we are very proud of. We have been the top investment location in the world last year, according to Site Selection magazine. Uh, on this chart, you can see top countries by jobs per capita, uh, and Hungary ranks uh, number 10 in this uh, prestigious uh, ranking. A couple of um, logos of companies that uh, decided by Hungary last year, despite of the pandemic year. You can see some US companies as well. Uh, IBM, for example, uh, or G Healthcare, or Diligent. This is a New York based uh, uh, company that is setting up uh, uh, a greenfield investment in Budapest. Um, I would like to mention or speak about uh, two sectors, two um, very important and successful sectors uh, uh, in Hungary. Uh, number one is automotive industry. This um, sector um, represents uh, almost 30% of industrial output uh, in the country. Uh, we are very proud to host uh, production units of uh, all the three premium uh, German premium car manufacturers uh, in the country. We have Audi with its largest um, engine manufacturing uh, plan uh, in the country. We have Daimler, Mercedes. Um, some of the, the models are, some of the Daimler models are produced uh, only in Hungary. For example, uh, Mercedes CLAs that you can see in the streets of the United States, they are all made in Hungary. And BMW has recently decided by a company and is just, its uh, production facility is under construction. Now, all, the, all, the, uh, all these companies are, uh, getting electrified and uh, moving from the traditional car uh, manufacturing to the electric uh, car manufacturing uh, in their uh, Hungarian facilities as well. In terms of uh, real estate perspectives, uh, a very interesting project, the so-called Zalazon Proving Ground that is about to be completed the next year. This is a governmental investment on the western part of the country, and this is going to be a testing environment for autonomous driving development. And this is unique because it, it provides a uh, uh, great facilities to test both the highway conditions and the urban uh, conditions. So we are very much looking forward to uh, this project to be finished soon. And the other sector, excuse me, I wanted to mention is the business services sector, which is uh, uh, very significant in Hungary. And in this sector, the US is, the, is uh, our number one investor. Just a couple of companies that, uh, uh, that are present from the United States in Hungary. On this slide, uh, you can see BlackRock, uh, Itron, Ford, Thermo Fisher, uh, IFF, Diligent, but we also have City, we have Morgan Stanley, and I could come up with many other uh, names as well. The reason behind uh, the decision of these uh, companies uh, by Hungary is, um, is the level of uh, workforce, not only well-educated, uh, uh, talented and um, um, hardworking people, uh, can be found in Hungary, but also due to the fact that the Hungarian language is so unique that it's not spoken by anyone else in the world, only, world only by the Hungarians, we need to learn uh, foreign languages. So uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, foreign languages can be available uh, as exotic as all um, European languages. Of course, English and German are the most penetrated to foreign languages in Hungary. And finally, um, a few words about the incentives. So when it comes to uh, investors deciding by Hungary, uh, a wide range of incentives can be avail available for an investment project like uh, uh, non-refundable cash subsidy, uh, tax allowances, incentives for training, for research and development. Uh, so uh, the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency as a one-stop shop service the agency is happy to handle the whole uh, incentive procedure. Yes, a couple of more words about the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency, whoever is interested in setting up a business in the country already at the um, decision-making phase, uh, they can help uh, with uh, information, uh, project management, location selection. They managed state aid uh, and uh, after uh, a positive decision, they help with implementing the project. And also when it's already the production phase, uh, we are still, uh, we still keep up the cooperation with supplier services and the different aftercare services. Yes, so in a nutshell, that was what I wanted to uh, share with you. I'm happy to answer questions and I'm also happy to be reached out uh, directly after the event should anyone need further information or should anyone have any uh, concrete project uh, uh, in terms of uh, Hungary. Thank you very much, Judith. That was very enlightening, very interesting to see the diversity you have in your economy. I had no idea, having visited as a visitor, as a tourist, you know, you only re you really don't get to see the true Hungary, um, but very informative presentation. We did get a, a question while you were speaking from one of our attendees. Um, one of our members has actually just opened a company in Hungary. He should have obviously spoken to you beforehand, right? <laughs> but not to worry, he has done yeah. that now. Um, his comment was he was told Commerce Bank was divesting its holdings in Hungary, and he wasn't sure if that was a trend you might see in the future with other foreign banks. Uh -huh. On that? Um. Can I invest, can I get a little bit of time and in, investigate this particular question? Because to tell you the truth, I, I don't know the exact um, answer for that, but I'm happy to consult with the colleagues and look in this uh, question. Sure. If you could share my email with the participants of this event, I'm happy to answer directly to other questions of uh, via email. Of course, I'm happy to answer it right now as well, but um, uh, I need some investigation concerning okay. this particular question. That's fair. Yeah. I'll certainly let them have your email address and you can take that offline. Sure. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciated that. I learned a lot. Appreciate your time and you joining us today. Absolutely. Um, it was my pleasure. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Judith's email address is in the chat box for anyone who wants to connect with her outside of today's session. She'd be very glad to help and answer specific questions for you. Um, our next speaker, unfortunately, has not been able to make it. She did call me just before the session. Uh, she is based in Miami. She's the president of the Hungarian chamber in Miami. And unfortunately, she had a very severe hacking event on her computer yesterday. Her bank accounts and everything were compromised. So she was hoping to be able to recover enough to join us this afternoon. But I told her, you know, do your best, but I can understand your whole business, your whole life is under threat right now. So we will move swiftly along, if we may, to our next presenters. We have a little bit of a dual presentation here. Um, Natalia is going to talk to us as the National Association of Realtors Global Ambassador. And she has invited her colleague from Hungary, Marcel Kovesti, 
who is a real estate broker, a managing broker in uh, Budapest, and he will talk to us as well. So let me tell you a little bit about our next two speakers. Natalia is a residential and commercial real estate managing broker in Illinois with over 15 years of experience. And prior to joining the real estate industry, she worked as an international business liaison in the engineering industry. She studied international trade and marketing in Poland and participated in an exchange program with the Moscow State Institute of International Relations. Natalia is fluent in Russian, Belarusian and Polish. And she currently serves, as I said, as our National Association's Global Ambassador to Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, and the Slovak Republic. She's a busy lady. She sits on various state and national committees, and we welcome her and thank her for her service, volunteering for that role for NAR and for being with us today. And Natalia invited Marcel Kovesti to join us. Marcel is the CEO owner of Rock Home Cospoint, a real estate company in Budapest. He serves as president of the agent subcommittee of the Hungarian Real Estate Association. And he's widely acknowledged to be a leader in the Hungarian real estate industry, where he works to advance best practices in real estate and to raise the bar of real estate professionalism in his country. That's certainly music to our ears, Marcel. Thank you for your commitment too. So I will hand over to our next two speakers. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so very much, Pat, and thank you for this lovely introduction for both of us. And obviously, we both appreciate the opportunity to speak um, on behalf of uh, me as on behalf of NAR and Marcel, I'm pretty sure on behalf of his colleagues in Hungary. So let me just try to pull up my presentation here. Just please allow me a couple of moments. Okay, I think we have it, right? Okay. Yes, we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, let's start. Uh, as Pat was asking me to speak a little bit about the National Association of Realtors Global, um, a role of uh, global ambassadors, so what they play in the arena of real estate. Um, and Marcel then will um, join me in uh, um, explaining how the process of uh, purchasing um, of real estate in Hungary works. Uh, so let's start with the National Association of Realtors, NAR Global. Um, NAR Global is, uh, maintains formal bilateral relationship with over 100 real estate associations. I believe right now this at this moment, there are 109 of them in 74 different countries around the world. Um, this network of global alliances gives realtors uh, the confidence of working with pro professionals that abide by NAR's uh, code of ethics. Um, and it's a very powerful work network and a referral platform for uh, growing the international business uh, for NAR members. The bilateral partnership agreement with Hungarian Real Estate Association, uh, MAIS, was signed in 1996. Um, so um, as uh, you did just mentioned, US and Hungary celebrate a 100 years anniversary on their relationship as countries. We also celebrate 25th anniversary <laughs> with our Hungarian colleagues. So, so happy 25th anniversary. Um, so um, what are uh, NAR goals um, in, uh, in, uh, in the global real estate? Uh, first of all, uh, they, uh, they are there to help NAR members become more successful in the global real estate markets. They also do raise the level of professionalism in the real estate industry. Um, and they also help develop and strengthen the real estate markets around the world by implementing global best real estate practices and strategies. And the, we're moving next to the NAR Global Ambassadorship Program. Who are global ambassadors? Um, I do see uh, the participants here 
as well. We probably have a couple. Carla, she has a big major experience in the <laughs> in the real estate market and the global real estate market, and I believe Samira as well. Uh, they are global ambassadors. Um, and uh, so, who are the global ambassadors? The global ambassadors are U.S.-based realtors um, that um, they uh, that appointed by NAR president. Um, they serve as ambassadors to their assigned country or a group of countries, and they help maintain NAR's relationship with its bilateral partners in these countries. Uh, GAs are appointed for one year term. Um, the annual appointment runs concurrently with the term of the NAR president. A GA position is voluntary, voluntary so there is no salaries involved. Um, GAs promote ethical real estate practices, help expand the global network, assist NAR partners in any sort of events, uh, conferences. Um, they also do assist international realtor members. Um, GAs are most likely to have CIPS designation. Uh, it is a certified international property specialist. Uh, they also um, might speak one or more uh, quite a more uh, foreign languages. So what are the differences between the Hungarian and um, US real estate markets? Uh, there are quite a few differences. Um, first of all, uh, the listing agreements in Hungary work a little bit different um, and they have a different exclusivity clause. Uh, majority of sellers reserve the right to sell the property themselves. Uh, so there is no exclusive right to sell listing agreements. And buyer's agreements are very, very uncommon. Um, they practically not, not, not existing in Hungary. Multiple agents also would be working on a sale of the same property. Um, for example, agents that represent the seller are about in 25% uh, of all real estate transactions countrywide. And out of this percentage, only 30 to 35% are represented by one agent only. Uh, after licensing, there is no requirement for renewal or continuing education. Um, association membership uh, by individual or by company. Uh, so uh, either individually or with uh, your company, you can join association. Also, uh, Hungary currently have, uh, has multiple different code of ethics. Um, so they, they are not really much enforceable. They, they try to abide by code of ethics, but the, there is no uniformity at the moment, uh, which uh, right now uh, Marcel is working on it to unify um, <laughs> uh, and to have a one code of ethics like we have here in the United States. There are, also, there are also multiple different forms and agreements, and sometimes they are not, unfortunately, enforceable either. Um, there is no MLS, um, but there, there is one main public-facing property portal, and it is ingatlan.com. There are also multiple IT solutions acting like MLS uh, in different parts of the country. And similarities, uh, obviously licensing is required to practice real estate um, in Hungary and uh, written contracts uh, must be executed by the parties involved in the transaction. So with this, I'm gonna give uh, the spotlight for Marcel mm -hmm. <laughs> so he can build on it. Uh, he can answer your questions if you might have and uh, he explain um, how the process of purchasing a real estate property works in Hungary. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, thank, thank, thank you that I can be here today. Um, so the buying process, I think, um, or originally I thought that it's, it's, it's the same everywhere, but uh, uh, in Hungary it work, works like that, that when you choose a property and uh, you decide that you would like to buy it, then you deal with the seller and then you sign a contract in front of a uh, uh, lawyer uh, and then you just obviously you pay for it and uh, you send it uh, turn the contract into the land registry but this is mainly uh, made by the lawyer 
who's uh, dealing with the case. And then uh, after, it depends, but it's 30 to 60 days, you will get the, the ownership rights and you will be registered. And uh, after this process, you have to pay the, the taxes and other fees, um, mainly the duty fee, which is, uh, which is important, which is 4%, uh, which, is, which is now really, um, it's a really good number right now because it was six, it was between four and six, but now it's 4%. So it's uh, really worse to buy a property. Um, in general, what you what it's really worse to know about the Hungarian property market, that is really growing and it was, uh, it was booming since uh, uh, 2014, we had a really huge uh, boom in the market. Even uh, in the last year, in some segment of the properties, uh, residential properties, we had uh, over 20% uh, price increase. So now the market is really attractive. Uh, I can I can assume that. So. Okay, the next. Okay. Okay, the factor for investing in Hungary. Uh, I think Judith uh, explained us uh, many things and many point of views that how, why why Hungary it's a uh, it's a great uh, location to invest and and uh, and to work with Hungarians. Uh, it's obviously the accessibility. Uh, it's easy to access. It's in the heart of Europe, uh, but I think we all know that uh, the average price of, price of the property it's uh, relatively low. And it's still increasing, so now it's a really time. It's a really good time to enter to the market, if somebody's thinking about an investment or uh, maybe to to come as a real estate investor, not just for residential properties or um, in some other fields too. It's really an, an attractive market. Uh, the country is beautiful, but I think many countries uh, or many many local patriots uh, would say that but Hungary really it's a, it's a beautiful naturally beautiful country as you did mention Balaton it's a Balaton lake it's a, it's a unique in even in Europe so it's really worth to visit but we have so many things to see and that's why the the tourism in the last years really grown up and uh, and 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 we are really one of the hot spot in the European destinations um, and as a, as a man, member of EU, uh, there, there are no restrictions to, to foreign buyers that they are coming from the EU. But, uh, you know, for investors, I think that the Hungarian market are always open and uh, looking for uh, possible ways to work together. Yes. Okay. Okay. About the Hungarian real estate agents, um, I think... In general, uh, it's really worth to understand that the Hungarian market, it's, uh, I won't say it's totally, but it's in, in, a, in a wide way, it's different than the, than the US market. It means that, um, but it's not only in Hungary, it's in, in Eastern Europe, we can say that, uh, that the post-communist countries are, are don't really like real estate agents because they, we believe that you know we can do everything and we can do this too and we can be we can sell our properties in the best way and we can we can do many things so so we really believe in ourselves uh, it means that uh, that uh, unfortunately uh, there are no exact measurements but uh, the calculation says that it's somewhere between 20 to 25% uh, out of the total real estate transactions, real estate agent involved, uh, which is comparing to the U.S. market, which I believe it's it's a little bit over than ninety percent. It's a, it's a totally different uh, um, thinking of of the real estate agent. But uh, but among the the twenty five percent. Uh, we are trying to do our best and we are trying to serve as much as we can, but we have to do really a lot of things to, to build a new generation, to, to, you know, to show and uh, to represent real estate agency as it should be. 
and uh, and we are working hard to do that. Um, so, in this market, uh, we are trying to use the social media as much as we could. Uh, as the presentation it says, that uh, only five percent uh, of the real estate agents are, are so-called experts in the in the in the social media, and they building their own self-branding. But um, but by the way, in the last two three years, this uh, this this model ju just started to to grow. So I think that every day more and more real estate agent, and especially the new generation, understands that this is something that it's must to have. Um, so they are focusing to build their own self branding. Um, like twenty percent of the of the. Um, uh 20 percent of the of the of the real estate agents use uh facebook or social media platforms as uh, as a business uh, uh, objective so so they use it as uh, in business purposes and the rest of them they are really using it for for personal purposes uh, purposes so this is some this is a this is a, an area that we should grow and we should learn a lot from other countries that how we can uh, use this pla uh, platform much more effectively. Um, and uh, and yes, as it says, the Hungary is a high context culture. It says that uh, we want everything to be written and in details. Uh, yes, we we like to to have things in. Um, in papers, we we you know we want to touch it. We want to know that everything what we said it's uh, it's uh, it's agreed, and it's all in all details. Uh, we are we are in agreed in many ways. Um, as a real estate agent, and uh, in in the Hungarian market, we are focusing to sign uh, exclusive contracts. Uh, we try to do it as much as we can, but. Um, we could reach something like 30% of the contracts are signed as an exclusive contract. Comparing to the Hungarian, con uh, comparing to the US con uh, contract, which I believe it's something the same, like uh, I, I believe it's over 90% of the representations are made as an exclusive. Uh, so this is something that we, we should also uh, grow. But you know, every market, it's uh, I think interesting when you have an opportunity to grow. So I think we have to learn a lot in this segment as well. Um, and that's all. Um, as a person, so as the presentation says, Hungarian people are really honest people. Uh, they will tell you always the, what they think and uh, how they think it. So, so how to say, uh, don't be hurt when, when, when some, some Hungarian people tell his, his, his true opinion about something. Um, as, which is good, which is good because you know, once you're honest, really it, it actually yeah. diversifies uh, the thought uh, for everyone, so it's it's actually good to have honesty in relationship. I think it's really good, and especially when you are investing in a country, it's really something it's really great to have. Um, uh, yes, and as it said, the presentation, the society, uh, in the western part of the country, it's more goal orientated. Where is the eastern part? It's more relationship orientated. Uh, the western part it's a little bit so-called richer, so the the cities are are a bit modern, and uh, the eastern part are still catching up. But it means also that the personal relationships are are much it's a bit more important. But in daily basis, you don't really feel it because Hungarians are Hungarians and. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Hungarians, uh, Hungarian books are worth of reading and the music worth of listening. Uh, so, and uh, probably the best bargain in Hungarian culture are dining and whining, right? Yeah, you're totally right. But I think uh, that could be a different long presentation about the Hungarian. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we'll we'll leave this a few minutes uh, for the for the um, for another uh, speaker. Um, um, and um, I just put this one, how to start global re referral relationships. Uh, I hope you finished, Marcel. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so um, I'm not sure uh, if, uh, if uh, Pat, what do you think? Uh, because um, I'm not sure because I was going to ask you about this uh, part of uh, slide, if you would like please, me to speak on that. Yeah, please go ahead. I think we have time because we lost another speaker, but I think this is important too. So yes, cover it, Natalia. Okay. All right. So how to start global referral relationship? I just put a couple of uh, tips for everyone. Um, first of all, you have to start with educating yourself. And uh, you have to pick a country or a couple, uh, learn about the country, about the country's culture, and also think about uh, educating yourself as a real estate agent, uh, earning um, some designations and certifications as um, certified international property specialist, which I mentioned before, at home with diversity a certification. Um, and also resort and second home property specialist. Uh, this uh, courses will help an AR uh, members gain global perspective to fully serve clients here and overseas. Uh, actually, any this is more targeted international course for international business courses, but for diversity, but any courses like um, a seller representative or buyer representative is also also is very helpful uh, because uh, then you can exchange your uh, knowledge and experience with, uh, for example, our Hungarian friends. Second is uh, to find a mentor. Um, you can look around and see if there are anybody uh, around you is already a global realtor. As I mentioned, we have uh, two attendees that are very, very active uh, in a global uh, arena. Um, and recently, CIPS, um, Advisory Board, um, created a mentorship program. So if you would like to uh, really start uh, gaining some knowledge and experience, uh, you may want to contact NAR CIPS uh, department and ask about this mentorship program. Next one is to belong to global professional groupings. And there are many of them. Um, and you really have to pick um, the one that's you know more for realtors, but not only. Um, they are Asian Real Estate Association of America, National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, uh, Association of South Asian Real Estate Professionals, just to name a few. Uh, but you also can, can be involved in your global business council uh, to any programs, events um, that they offer or any other councils offer. I know that some councils do set up Facebook events, Facebook live events that are very popular. Um, so you might want to look uh, into this kind of programs. Uh, also um, get in touch with Chamber of Commerce of specific country. Uh, they are a big resource uh, for, for establishing relationships. Um, additionally, in you can look around and see if there are any local ethnic community groupings that you can participate and explore explore the culture um, of this particular region. Um, the next one, you can try position yourself as a global um, practitioner to start self branding uh, and marketing. Uh, for example, maybe in your um, website online presence, you can set up a Google translation or any uh, buttons for the currency exchange and so on. And obviously you need to start networking. Um, any events you can go to, um, you can network. It's pretty much self-explanatory. And there are so many venues right now not, before it was a lot in person, right now you don't have to travel much, you can go and network virtually. Um, and don't forget about uh, NAR uh, creates also opportunities to attend at mid-year uh, legislative meetings and annual conferences. Um, I believe this year it will be in San Diego. Uh, there is also for the commercial practitioners will be C5 Summit in New York um, at the end of September. Uh, so if somebody is practicing commercial real estate, they can uh, attend this event as well. And um, if that referral will come your way, you need to have a team of professionals. So you really have to assemble a team of professionals to know what to do. Uh, you have to have a CPA that knows the laws, um, title company, attorney, uh, money transfer company, 
So if the referral does come your way, you have a seamless transaction. Um, and obviously, I just wanted to um, highlight one thing. If you have a real estate license in the state of, uh, not in the state, but in the U.S., you have to practice U.S. Uh, real estate in U.S., but not in Hungary. So just don't take the plane and don't fly to Hungary and start selling and buying real estate in Hungary. <laughs> so it's just a, a quick note. And uh, that would conclude my uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any questions um, or need additional information, please reach out. Here's contact information for me and for Marcel as well. So thank you so very much. Thank you. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sure, absolutely. Um, first of all, I'm interested, from my own personal knowledge of working with Hungarians, I know that family ties are very strong. Family is very important in, in the Hungarian culture. But I also know that a lot of Hungarians leave Hungary for education, for work, and stay away for long periods of time. So I'm just curious to know, do you find, in terms of the real estate market in Hungary, that returning Hungarians or Hungarians live overseas might buy a second home, or perhaps when they retire, they return to Hungary. Is that a, a market for you, for drawing people back into the country, Marcel? Yes, it's... Uh... I think it's in look in the last twenty years it was a uh, is a market for um, for pets that uh, so they uh, when they moving back especially in uh, 1956 we had a, a revolution and uh, in that time there are many uh, families Hungarian families moved to the to the U.S. and uh, in 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 the last years in the last. 10, 15 years, they're moving back and they're buying second homes here in the Hungarian market. But to be honest, it's not, uh, it's not that strong. So we see that the, the, the foreign buyers are mainly coming for, for investing purposes. So let's say the Irish people, the Spanish people, uh, Israeli people, uh, even some American uh, buyers, they are mainly coming for investing uh, purposes because the market it's um, it's really booming in the in the last year so it's really worth to buy properties here uh, for investing but as you say there is a there is a market for second homes and there is uh, expatriates that they when they are moving back they uh, they buying their uh, second home so there is a market for that which is quite stable uh, but it's not that uh high right in the moment so it's 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 and still we have so when people buy investment properties do you see them buying residential or commercial typically mainly residential properties mainly residential yeah. so they're buying long-term rental investments and you have a good rental market for that yes there is a yes there uh, the income is coming in in, in two ways uh in one in one hand, the um, the rental market, which gives you something like it's depend when and how, but it's let's say between five to seven percent uh, uh, income can bring you, and uh, and there is an extra the 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 growth of the the price growing of the real estate. Uh, the, real, the residential real estate. So as I mentioned in some segments, even just in the last year, it was uh, almost 20% of the price increase. So okay. if they, you know, it's, it sounds really great when you have a, uh, an opportunity and when you buy a property and within one year you, you realize something like 20, 20, it depends when you do, but uh, you can you can make like 20, 25% of increase, uh, which sounds really great. You know, we never know how, when, when it will stop and when the Zenit will come, but uh, mm -hmm. but still still we are in the in the boom. Make the most of it while we can. Yes. What, what about financing? Do you have any programs to help foreigners get financing locally or do they need to arrange money outside the country first? Obviously, we have a, a program for uh, financing these properties. Uh, you know, every bank has their offer to to make it. So, so it's quite known and uh, quite easy to make it. 
Okay, well, that's interesting because many countries, you know, for foreign nationals to get loans, they make it a little bit difficult sometimes or much more expensive to, to borrow money than a, a local person would. So that's encouraging. It's uh, different what do you buy when you buy a, a new home or you are a newly built property. Usually they have some uh, banks, bank connections, and uh, they can help you to, to finance this property really easy and fast. But even if you buy a, a used uh home so a second home then uh, then then there are some there are many options so it's really well developed well developed here in the last year right okay great well, thank you uh, it Tell looks you. it looks like yes from judith uh, um, presentation that the tax rate was very good so they're really trying to encourage to invest in hungary if you were to compare the hungary was nine percent i'm not sure if i correct but <laughs> i will go back to that presentation I believe it was 9% and 16%, 19% to other countries. So it really shows that they encourage the foreign investment in a country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yes, other thing I, I know confirm that it's 9%. The corporate income tax is 9% flat tax. <laughs> Single digit, right? Single <laughs> digit. I remember that. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Let's move on now and meet our next panelist. Uh, Aniko Gulias. Aniko, um, I have known for many years. I was very excited when she said she would join us today. Uh, so I know her as a friend and a customer. And she actually grew up in Hungary, where she graduated from culinary high school and she went to college to study hospitality management. So once she was awarded her degree, she very sensibly moved to Sarasota, right? Where else would you like to live? And she joined the Lido Beach Resort here as a member of their international management program. After years in the hospitality industry, she started her own business, Kurtos Chimney Cake. And many of our local participants will know her from her presence at the farmer's market every Saturday. But she also has a storefront downtown just off Pineapple Avenue in McCanch Square. And this is a great spot to pick up a quick lunch or pastries to take home. Uh, Aniko has brought to Sarasota a unique handcrafted pastry from Hungary, whose origins date back to 15th century Transylvania. See, prior to this, the only thing I knew about Transylvania was Count Dracula. So this is a major step forward, Aniko, thank you. Um, originally, this was a sweet pastry, but she's made this delicacy her own and offers savory options too. Uh, she's received two awards from SRQ Magazine, Best Creative Sandwich and Best Dessert. And she's appeared on local TV as a guest on The View, uh, where she demonstrated how her delicious pastries are made. Uh, Aniko lives right here in Sarasota with her husband and nine-year-old twins, so she is a very busy lady. Uh, and please join me in welcoming her. I know she's very proud of her Hungarian roots, and that's why I asked her here today to share with us. Thanks, Aniko. Thank you so much, Pat. It's so nice to meet you, all of you, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, going back to Marcel, yes, uh, we Hungarians, we want to do and we think that we can do everything alone. And I'm very happy that in 2009, I was referred to you and we purchased our first and second home with you. So we highly recommend uh, having a real estate agent, even in Hungary or here in the US. So, and, um, and uh, with uh, pet help, uh, we were able to, uh, our first home, uh, we could uh, sell it right now in uh, tripled. So uh, the, it's a great investment. Yes, absolutely. So I made a fun, uh, I'm so sorry, I have a phone call. I made a uh, fun um, uh, slideshow. And did I share my screen? Yes, you did. We see everything, thank you. I tried to, to pinpoint something, what uh, if you have a Hungarian customer and you have help, uh, try to help them to purchase a house, how it's easy to connect uh, with them and get an, an easy going, uh, well um, uh, going uh, uh, relationship. So, uh, hung and, and uh, Ms. Tapo already uh, told how large is the country, 10 million people, very unique language, only us uh, speaking it. 
and uh, the principality it's uh, it was 1985 so um, just a couple of from the history if you would like to um, we are very proud of our history Hungarians so it's I always um, feel honored if I have a customer and they know about my country know about the culture so um, just uh, important dates, uh, our first king, 1000, uh, Stephen King, uh, converting his realm to Christian kingdom um, uh, from uh, uh, 140 years with the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the good thing came out, uh, 1500 uh, uh, bad in Hungary, the Turkish bad day, we got them from their culture. And uh, uh, after the World War I, uh, Trianon, uh, it was a big loss, two thirds of the country. And um, we were, after the World War II, satellite state from Soviet uh, Union. And um, in 1989, uh, we became a democracy. And uh, some fun facts. Uh, uh, we have four seasons uh, defined by two major waterways, uh, the Danube and the Tisza. A lot of um, um, uh, customers and, and people from US know Budapest and uh, they are always sharing happy memories. So I'm so thankful for the Hungarians to giving that to the, uh, to the people because they are all very, very happy that they visited our capital. Uh, we have uh, 1,500 spas and thermal springs, and uh, the Lake Balaton was mentioned a couple of times, and I'm proud to say that I grew up there. Uh, I grew up in Castay. This, this little picture here, um, it's a gorgeous view uh, to the lake. This is a lake, and that's uh, this hill called Badachon. It was a volcano, excellent uh, wine region. And if I remember good, we have 21 uh, uh, wine region. Uh, correct me uh, if it's uh, not correct, 21, right? The highest point of Hungary, it's 1,014 meters. We have a, a very unique language. Um, we have 14 four letters in our alphabet. And which is interesting that we write our first um, uh, last name first and then the first name last. So my name is Guyash Aniko. Uh, I kept my sig signature Guyash Aniko, but Aniko Guyash uh, uh, everywhere else. Uh, we have 13 Hungarian Nobel Prize winners. Uh, very, very proud of our um, musicians, composers, and um, uh, scientists also. And hopefully we will have the 14th by Dr. Koriko uh, um, Katalin, who helped um, uh, COVID vaccination, the mRNA uh, technique. Um, the birthplace of famous composer like Barto Kodai List, bird famous composer. And uh, in the Olympic, we won uh, 465 uh, uh, medals. We are excellent in water sports. Uh, water polo or kayaking, uh, uh, and here in Sarasota, uh, uh, in the Benderson Park, we have the rowing uh, world uh, competition almost every year. So we are very proud. And I have met uh, with the teams here. They visited uh, me, so, and I cheered for them on the competition. Uh, Easy to remember, I try to pick some uh, stuff. Um, Hungarians can um, uh, stay with you and easy conversation with your clients. Invention, what uh, changed the history. We use everyday items and uh, probably we didn't know uh, that uh, they invented by Hungarians. Bell pen, uh, bureau uh, was uh, for the pen, uh, club soda. And we Hungarians definitely love club sodas. Uh, uh, um, matches, hologram, dynamo, the ruby cube, uh, C vitamin, floppy disk, what we don't use, uh, use anymore, uh, computer, binoculars, helicopter, 4T model, and there is so, so many more. I didn't want it to boring, but these are easy. If you grab a pen, just think about Hungarians. <laughs> it's, it's fun. And, uh, and my company, I, I started the company 2015. 
I, uh, after I had my uh, children, I decided to go back to my roots, to uh, catering and hospitality. So I established um, a Kurtos Chimney Cake and we came up with the idea uh, uh, with a savory version. We started Farmer's Market. This is a pastry, it's a yeast-based dough, but in here you can see how we roll it on a wood pin. So it's honestly, it's an amazing show and it's freshly baked. It's not fried like a donut. And um, it's a very, very old heritage. In Transylvania, they used to do it over coal. And the signature touch that the sugar caramelizes like top of the creme brulee, there is no other pastry in the world. Crunchy outside, but fluffy inside. And uh, sandwiches, uh, we twisted the product a little bit and uh, uh, we um, created um, new sandwiches and ice cream in the sweet one for this market. And I'm um, very happy and proud to, to serve this Hungarian tradition. And it's uh, well, uh, very well welcomed uh, in the US here in Sarasota also, and all over. So you can, you can find us um, um, uh, in Sarasota and uh, our address of the store website, it's uh, kurtoscake.com. We do, uh, we do uh, teach people who is interested to do this business. So that's what we do. I hope I helped a little bit, make it fun. And uh, just some interesting fact, if you meet with a Hungarian client who, who wants to buy a home here in the US. Looking at the pictures of your products is always fun, right? I wasn't hungry before, but I am now. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so um, much, really. Sorry? Yeah, thank you so much for the yeah. opportunity. No, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule too. Um, anyone have any questions for any of our panelists? I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. I do have uh, some material that was going to be covered by uh, Juja. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it here. She was going to talk a little bit more about Hungarian business culture. So we have a couple of minutes with your indulgence. I can certainly review some of her materials because I think it would be useful to all of us. And if the panelists want to chime in, if they have anything to add, I'd be very happy to hear from them. Um, so generally speaking, Hungarians are a little formal in their business dealings. I think both of our speakers today said that. Uh, they will typically greet each other with a handshake. They're very good at maintaining eye contact because that's very important for building trust. Uh, although sometimes we see the older generations bowing a little bit. Um, Hungarians like a little bit of personal space when you're talking to them. Usually they're gonna keep you about an arm's length away. So if they adjust their space when they're talking to you, don't step forward. You know, that means they don't wanna to be too close to you. So give them that little bit of space there. Uh, they dress quite formally. Um, when they dine out, food and wine, I think a couple of people said is very important, very important to everyone's culture, but having spent four or five days in Budapest, probably three years ago now, I, I had the best food and the best wine all the time. I can't even remember a meal where I thought, no, that was a little bit of a tourist trap. We ate amazing food. We met amazing people. Um, the one thing I liked about the city was it's a living city. Uh, people live in the city center. They go shopping, they take their dogs out to walk, they meet on the corner for coffee with their friends, they talk to the neighbors outside their homes. It's one of the last, you know, you go to a big city in Europe now and a lot of times it's all business related or it's all tourist related. I just found Budapest was that really good balance between local people living and, and maintaining their homes there. So some do's and don'ts when you're working with a Hungarian client. Um, Hungarians do take great pride in their food and wine, so always be complimentary about this, especially if you want to be continued being fed, right? Um, by similar token, please don't criticize any food, particularly meals prepared by older Hungarians. You know, they may have been uh, growing up in a time when resources were a little bit scarce, so they may not be so lavish meals in that case. Um, but Hungary has undergone numerous economic upheavals, so we need to be sensitive and considerate about topics relating to the economic standards of the individual and the country, obviously. 
the formality for Hungarians extends to them when they're around food. So as Americans, sometimes we don't stand on ceremony when we eat, we're very casual. That may be taken in the wrong way with our Hungarian hosts, so be aware of that. Uh, and be sensitive when you want to introduce into the conversation anything about the world wars or the cold wars. Um, a lot of Hungarians are very open to discussing their history, but some of them not too keen on revisiting the recent past, perhaps. Some of the, the don'ts to be aware of. Um, depending on who you're dealing with in Hungary, they may or may not like to talk about Hungary's ethnic minorities. Uh, and it's best not to show enthusiasm for American economic influences on Hungary. I know you did that kind of goes a little bit against what some of the things you were saying today. But again, as Americans, we can be, I, you know, I'm dual citizen, so I can say this. I'm British, but I'm also American. We can be very proud of our nation and perhaps be less sensitive to where we are and who's listening to what we have to say. Um, don't be offended, as Marcel said, if your Hungarian counterpart is a little bit blunt and very straightforward and says what they think. That actually is very helpful to us sometimes because we know exactly where we stand. So please don't take offense at that. Uh, the one thing that I found quite interesting when I was there is if a Hungarian needs to point, they don't point in the same way where we do with our fingers, which can be quite threatening. They often just flick their finger quickly in a general direction, or you have to follow their eyes or they might nod a little bit. So they're not very um, vigorous in their hand signals, shall we say. I noticed that when we were getting directions when we got lost a couple of times. Um, meetings in Hungary can be very formal, uh, should always be scheduled in advance. And Hungarians don't like to meet too many times around Christmas and New Year's holiday. Um, so anything between Christmas and mid January might be difficult. And the same thing in the summer months, they like to take their vacations in the summer. But they do want to get to know you, especially as Marcel said, was it the east of the country that they're a little more uh, relationship oriented? So they want to know you, get to know a little bit about you and build a relationship before they start doing business with you. So allow them some time to find out about you. Um, Hungarians can also be a little bit formal in terms of adhering to hierarchical structure of an organization, but usually negotiations are quite open. Um, as Marcel commented, they do like contracts. They expect contracts to be in writing and to fairly document everything that's been agreed. High pressure sales tactics will not work. Would you agree? Yeah, no pushy salesman, please, in Hungary. All right, any final questions for our panelists? I do have a couple of housekeeping things, if I can bear your indulgence for just a few more minutes while I share my screen again. So the, just to summarize, these are the speakers we had today. And again, I thank you all very much for your participation. This is the lady who could not join us today. So if anyone would like to get in touch with her, uh, she is the president for Hunbiz Flow, which is the Hungarian Chamber of Business and Commerce in Florida. Uh, she is based in Miami and she would be very open to receiving emails from you. Very happy to get you involved with the organization. They are very strongly represented in Orlando, in Miami, here in Sarasota and in Daytona. And here in Sarasota, we have an annual Hungarian festival, which didn't happen in 2020, but is happening again in October this year uh, at the Sarasota County Fairgrounds. So this is the 15th Hungarian festival, great place to sample that wonderful food we've been talking about, dancing, music, competitions. The last time I attended, they had a huge history exhibit, which was, was very, very well done. Uh, and if you look at down at the bottom of that slide, you'll see the website. Uh, if you just actually Google the Hungarian festival, it will come up with their contact information if you want to get involved in that. 
And some of the things we have coming up in terms of events from your Global Business Council, our spotlight event for Panama is in August. And in September, we go to the Netherlands and then back to the Caribbean for the Bahamas in October. In terms of classes we are hosting, we have Glo Go Global Jumpstart Your International Business on the 15th of July, uh, the RSPS certification on July 29th, and we're hosting a five-day CIPS Institute during October. So please, if you are RAISM members, check those out on our calendar and register for the classes in advance. And we look forward to seeing you all again once more, a very big thank you to all of our panelists. Truly appreciate their participation. And we hope to see them again in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you, Aniko. Lovely to see you. Nice to meet thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very thank much. You thank you, Natalia, thank you, thank you too. I really appreciate thank it. You. Happy to be on the panel. Thank you. Bye-bye.